Welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Podcast. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we have Molly and Chad. Now, you may know Molly and Chad from the Lake Life with Molly and Chad podcast. It is one of the boating podcasts that I listen to, and it's why I invited them on. They have incredibly great content, very valuable, but they just seem like people that if I ran into on the water, I'd probably become friends with them. That, that's kind of the sense I get. So thank you all for, for joining us today. No, Thanks thank for, you for having us. us. A- absolutely. Like I said, I listen to a lot of your podcasts. I know a little bit of your backstory, but share with some of my listeners that may not have found you yet. Um, tell them how you got into boating and where you're at, the boats, plural, that you have, <laughs> and, and fill everybody in on who you all are. Okay. All right. So my parents purchased a boat. Um, it was a 1976 Mark Twain. Oh, um, yes. It had the electric blue pleather seats. Um, it was a tri hole and I was about six years old. So the boat was about six years old then it had the uh, classic, um, I don't even know what the technical turn is, but the, you, you pump the gas. Oh, oh yeah. the primer bubble. It yeah. Was yeah. Was, yeah. Um, we would take it out on Taylorsville Lake here in Kentucky. We would take it to green occasionally if it was during the week um, here in Kentucky. So that's how we got started. That, that's so crazy because my family story is um, I was five when my family bought a 16 foot Larson tri hall. Nice. with the 85 outboard on it with the primer ball. Yes. And, and yeah, it, and I grew up in the Midwest, so I'm a Nebraska guy, but I mean, same age, same thing. It was like, didn't know anything about boating. We got a boat and now, you know, I, I'm probably older than you are 40 some years later, you yeah. know, boating is in our blood, everybody in our family boats. And it's, it's been a constant. Right. sounds like that's the same for you. Same deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was pretty much to um, my parents, friends, then also started to buy boats. Yep. So it just became a way of life, you know, on, on, um, uh, Fridays, you'd head down to a lake of your choice and spend the weekend. And back then it was, uh, camping. Okay. You know, they, they didn't really have air mattresses back then. You know, it People was are soft now. Don't yeah. you think <laughs> they don't know how to rough it? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that it really became a way of life. And as, Friends came into my world and obviously um, now my husband, yeah. um, it just became a way of life for all of us. I married into boating. Uh, you know, I grew up fishing and the boats were purely for fishing. I mean, you kept them running just to get you to the fishing hole. And then, you know, when I married into the pleasure boating side of it, it's a whole different world. That's and right. I was, uh, it took me a long time. Her dad probably laughed at me a lot. You know, um, so when, tell me this, when you're, when you're dating, when you all first get together and you go out for the first time and you drive her dad's boat, tell me about that experience. Uh, that well, didn't happen wait, until way wait. after we were oh, married. Oh, really? First okay. First time he came out on the boat, which is, uh, uh, let's see, it was the chaparral. Yeah. Then, the 24 foot, uh, chaparral. And, um, he brought the fishing pole. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I didn't know. Oh, yeah. Like, on the, like, on the yeah. chaparral. That's a no go. Yeah. No, that's not happening. So I left it in the truck. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, I learned that a lesson that day. Experience. Oh, yeah. that's that's funny. I, when I met my now wife, um, we had been dating for maybe six months. And my family has a lake place at the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. And right. I said, all right, Sarah, come to the lake with us or with me. And we'll see if we have anything here, because if you can't handle a week at the right. lake, then we don't have a future. And I loved her. She was awesome. I pretty I'm much like, this girl's the... perfect. But if yeah. you can't do the lake, you're out. Sorry. I yeah. pretty much got the same spiel, pretty but it was much. a houseboat trip. Yeah. Oh, really? If you can't <laughs> make it through this houseboat trip. trip. Yeah. You're not going to survive this uh, no. being with this family because they do it every year. I mean, they did it on a regular basis. Um, it was all new to me. You know, the yep. AstroTurf sleeping in a tent <laughs> on the top. You know, when you wake up in the morning, it's literally bodies on every square inch of the floor. The If there's a flat surface, there was a kid or a person sleeping on it. So, oh, and, that's too um, funny. Yeah. Yeah. And they all, you know, they all love each other and get along. So it was uh, a great time. It's yep. hard. I had to leave early, so it was hard to go. <laughs> you know, they started talking about you like, I don't know. Do you think he fit in? Did he? Fit yeah, in? you think he's he did? OK, it? but did you notice how he didn't take the trash out when the trash was full or oh, whatever? No, no. The, whatever the he thing gave me is? the lowdown on all that before <laughs> she gave me the little like, look, 
You're going to have to do some stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Tie up boats. We still preach the same thing now, you know. Well, this is what I love about your podcast is you two have a lot of experience. Molly, yours goes way back to when you're a kid where it's just sort of ingrained and you don't even think about it and you just do like, all right, we'll get, we're get done boating. We wipe it down. Like I don't even think about it. No, right. My boat, friend's boat, whatever we do it. And now Chad, you come in, you're like my wife come into the new and you've got a whole new world to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, and you guys share that experience on the podcast with some pretty funny stories. I got to say, um, and then (laughs) you have kids, older kids, adult kids, kids, right? Yes. Yeah. Correct. So you had the opportunity to teach them to go through the, you know, you, how, when did you all get your first boat with the kids? How old were they? Or did you just, you always had access to a boat while they were growing up? Yeah, we always had access yeah. to a boat. Um, our mm-hmm. oldest is 26, 24, 24. That's <laughs> close enough. Whatever. It's our boy. It's our boy. He, <laughs> uh, you know, he's off and running. So but we um, bought our first boat um, was a Sweetwater 24 foot, uh, 21 foot uh, with a 150 on it. Um, 17, 12 years, years ago, yeah, it's, it's 12, 13 years ago. Okay. But up until then, it was always on my, my folks boat. Yeah. Bone yeah. Rooney. So as growing up in um, the world of lake life in a runabout, um, pontoons weren't really ever. Um, oh, no. We were the first to get the triple tune. Oh, you made the switch and, first. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah you we were made out cash. Like, what do you yes. get the pond to grandpa boat yeah. for? Yes. But it still yeah. did 40 miles an hour and it held 14 people. So yep. that was what we were thinking. Yeah. It was um, great. So the kids, when they were little, um, well, you know, 12 years ago, Tristan was 12 and and Elena was eight. So um, we had this deal that they couldn't play summer sports because that interfered with the lake life. Right. And they were fine with it. Can we tube? Oh, we bought new tubes. We bought. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There was, there were all the critics, right. Cause they're all out there. I can't believe you don't let your kids play summer sports because of the lake. And I'm like, you know what? They're going to bring friends. Right. And we're going to have conversations and experiences with them that you're never going to have. Oh, yeah. Offered. So it's been really cool to watch them grow up as well on the lake as I did um, and just have those different experiences um, that we did. The conver- was- the conversations that you oh, mentioned, I, I grew up, you know, five till 47. My, and, but now my daughters are just turned eight today and 10. And so we're getting to those conversations with, yep. I would, I remember floating out, they used to drink, my parents would drink gin and tonics back in the day. And you count the number of limes that were in the glass. That's how you knew oh, how yeah. many you had. And the conversations that you would have when you're, yeah. you know, 12, 15, 18, 20 with your parents, you're right. You aren't going to have those in yep. many other settings Right. Um, for better or worse, some of them right. are like, I can't believe I'm talking about this with my right. mom or my yeah. dad, but they're, they're incredibly fun. And I think valuable for your family. 100%. Yes. And again, it was their choice. If they wanted to play well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Softball, yeah. baseball and you know, any summer sport, fine. We will, we will adjust, but we're still going to go to the lake. You're going to yeah, be, getting up we, we may game. miss a few games. I'm yeah. sorry. You may but, be riding two and a half hours dirty, but we're going to get to the lake. So. Yeah. Yeah. So what made you all decide to start the podcast? Obviously, you love boating. Obviously, you, you're you very knowledgeable. Um, even though you're no attachment to the industry, you're just I, I, the way well, I took it is good people wanting to help out. Is that is that what kind of was that, the start of it? A lot of it was the other podcast that we had listened to, like when we um, we started thinking about this two or three years ago. They're all about like circumnavigating the globe and being on your giant yacht. And it's all, you know, oh, come Buffy. We must go to the Lido deck. <laughs> like, no, that's not what boating is to me. Boating is yep. lake, like lake life. It's uh, yeah. The ocean is great. The ocean is amazing. I love I'm not saying that's not a, you know, a great way to spend your time. But for me, being back in a calm cove that's 90 foot deep anchored out you know, sun, birds, there's an eagle flying over. She's, you know, reading a book on the front. I'm fishing off the back. The kids are, you know, enjoying it. Our buddy's wake boat or our wake boat, whatever. Everybody's having a great day. It really, when it's all said and done, didn't really cost me, but anything but time. Right. Because 
you know, I already had all that stuff. I was, you know, it's not, it's not um, really going out of my way. A lot of people think, I can't believe you do that every weekend. It's like, I can't believe you don't. I mean, yeah. if you have the facilities to do it, <laughs> why not? Tried this? Why would I sit at home on a beautiful Saturday and watch Netflix when I can, you know, be blasting down Wolf Creek, dragging four kids on tubes and cracking up the whole time? Oh, yeah. Like, Give me more. Give me more. Yeah. <laughs> and another you know. reason that, w- that we started it from my perspective is that anything that can calm nerves on the boat ramp I'm right, all in. Right. Yes. <laughs> so, it improves my and, Saturday pulling you know, that boat in. I'm if people don't do the lake, if people don't do boating, they don't know what Cheetos can do to a seat. Yep. You know, they don't know that spray sunscreen is going to leave a film and that leaves the boat owner in a situation to somehow get that crap off. Right. Yep. Um, but, Kool-Aid hair dye. And, and people are afraid <laughs> to ask. And a lot of boat owners just assume that people know <laughs> or you know. I, get, I get this on my channel a lot obviously boat buyer secret weapon i'm talking to people that are thinking about buying usually their first boat maybe their second or third and i get people that say if you don't know how to do it you shouldn't get into boating I'm like everybody started without knowing how to yeah. do it and it's people like you all that are sharing hey don't you know if somebody's got red hair dye yeah. whether it's kool-aid oh, or whether it's from the salon it's going to leave a mark somewhere on your boat. Yes. It just, it's going to happen. If you've got right. Cheetos, it's going to get smashed into your carpet and do a disaster yep. cleaning. And that's what I, that's what I love is it's, it's real world, you know, not chip and Buffy, but it's, right. you know, Molly and Chad out on their boat with their kids having a ball. Right. Like this is what the real world is about in boating. Right. Um, so I, well, I, I, I love I think- it. I don't want people to think, you know, like it's the only, the, our way is the only way, or that's how we feel. It's not, we learn something new every summer as experienced as we, you think we may be every summer. I learned something new about my boat, my trailer, my truck, Molly skills, my skills. You know, I learned how to drive this wake boat, which is a whole different animal. If you've never driven an inboard out, you know, the, where the props in the middle, you yeah, just true have inboard. Right? Yep. Oh my gosh. It's a whole different animal. So that first day we took out of Jamestown past the buoy line and I hit the hammer on it and it didn't do anything I expected it to do. <laughs> it was like, what is going on? I had no control over the nose or, you know, it's like, it's all about speed and you're, you pay attention to your waves and what yep. you're going into. It's not a cruiser at all. So, <laughs> so you know, tell everybody the boats that you have now and where you boat. We kind of, we skipped over that part because I just jumped right in. So you can tell them about your boat and then I'll okay. talk about mine. Oh, okay. So they're his and hers. I didn't know <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. how they were split Mine up. is the Cypress K pontoon. It's a triple tune. It's got a 225 mer- nice. Mercury on it. Uh, does everything. It's got the big lounger on the back that goes either direction. You know, you just. <laughs> pop the button and slide one way or you can lounge looking out or you can lounge looking forward. It's up to you. Captain seats everywhere. You know, the big couch on the other side. That's me. That's what I love. I can fish. We can lock all the little kids in the giant floating living room. That's what I call it. So it's got double bimini's. Molly hates double bimini's. She wants to take the front one off. (laughs) I won't. I'm like, no, it's 25 feet of shade. Why would you get rid of that? So, (laughs) Anyway, that's what I, that's the one I prefer. My boat is a 25 foot wake boat. Now it is a heyday. I don't know if you know that um, brand, but they don't have a good. um, It's not a lot of fans, not a lot of fans of the heyday because it's cheap. The Mastercraft, the, the um, Teagues, any of those. Yeah. yeah, Not Teagues. Centurion. Yeah. But let me ask you this, because I have this belief is. There's no bad boats out there. How much fun do you have on that boat? And oh. does it do what you need it to do? And it's half the price. Yes. It's, it gets the same smiles per gallon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and we also know too, that in order for us to be able to have the luxury and the blessing to have two boats, we can't afford to do the, the world of the $140,000 boats. Right. Yep. So, you know, we, sacrifice if you will from some of the amenities like we have great friends that that have those um fascinating wake wake boats with the computer screens and and they, <laughs> the auto fill <laughs> which is awesome but 
we also know that we can choose, you know, if we want to have a leisure day with little people, our friends that have little right. folks, the pontoon is going to be better. Some but of the older folks, our kids and yep. their friends, the wake boat's going to be better. And sometimes we take them both. Yep. You know, do you have a, I know you talk about a, a lake cabin or a cottage. Do you, do you have a place on Cumberland? Is that where you are? Like Cumberland, Cumberland. Yeah. We okay. Have a place at Jamestown. Yep. Okay. So you keep your boats there on a lift yes. on a trailer. No, in boat sheds. We pull it out every, well, the pontoon, we it'll stay in over the weekend. I'll put it in on a Thursday or Friday morning. Okay. Take it out on Sunday, but the wake boat stays in the boat shed unless we're using it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. So we I, get I, the ramp every weekend. Okay. So <laughs> you're, so the, <laughs> Hey, let me give you some advice. Your, your episode on the boat ramp etiquette. Um, I, I think that's one every boater should be forced to listen to, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, just the basics of common courtesy of, you know, Hey, let me give you some tips about how to back it in and, and all yeah. of that. It's Don't just, be afraid to ask. Cause like yeah. I said on the podcast, if I'm standing, if I'm sitting in my truck watching you fumble four or five times i'm like bro i'm right here i will gladly <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i don't want to be that guy that goes up and says like come on man yep I you gotta balance to it at I've least been... give me like a heads up or like yo can you come <laughs> out here can you give me some eyes or yeah you know yeah because you've got to you've got to balance is hey can i help you out and now they're upset that you called them out that they don't know right, what they're doing right. versus you let them struggle and maybe get hurt or, or ruin their boat or whatever the situation in either way yeah. yes 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 so the podcast is a great way throw it out there now you got it it's free download it on your phone and you're good right. to go um what are what have been some of your favorite episodes some of your most popular episodes and some of the the most engagement i guess is maybe the right way to say it with your with your conversations um i think the the very first one we got a lot from that okay um, and then the, um, the food one that's yeah. been really popular. Yeah. The okay. food. And then the one that we did with, um, Nancy and Steve, um, pulling, pulling boat, pulling, pulling tubers, tubers and, and skiers. And okay. That. That's your friends that joined you on that episode. Another yeah, I believe it's, okay. yeah. um, 10 or 11. It's pretty deep. Um, okay. Yeah. He, he has competition wakeboarded or surfed or. I don't know. He's, he's been doing it for 30 years. He makes it look so easy. I have pictures of Steve <laughs> eight feet in the air on a wakeboard. And it looks literally like he, eight feet. Like it in, looks like, he's really? cut, it looks like he's cutting the grass on a Tuesday. <laughs> like, this is incredible. How, and there's like <laughs> multiple, I took like multiple shots and he's doing all these tricks and it's just like, mm. yeah, <sighs> that's too funny. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those have been the best, I think, so far. I, I've really they've been on two or three episodes with you. I remember them two, being yeah. on on another one, I think. Yeah, two. And then we had Brian so. and Katie on two as yeah. well. Okay. Uh, maybe I didn't realize there was two different couples. I may have gotten yeah, them yeah. mixed yeah. up then. Yeah, yeah, we had Brian and Katie were on for the music episode and then boating with babies and kids. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, I I borrowed that idea. I, I had my daughter give uh, her favorite snacks on, on the video. She gave her five favorite snacks with uh, she, the 10 year old did that one. Yep. Uh, so that was, I like that one. I hope you don't mind. Oh no, 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 no. it's good. You, you got to <laughs> leave those readily available because yeah, it happens a lot in, 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 you know, on boats, you've got to put everything away. So stuff's right. not laying out right. everywhere and kids get hungry. Yes. I don't know what it is about being on the water, but my girls, they never eat so much in their entire lives. They're right. always hungry mm -hmm. and it's, it's amazing. I think it's the swimming, swim for 20 minutes and then get in and eat yep. swim for 20 minutes and get in and eat. Yeah, yep. that's exactly right. So now on your last episode of the season, I think you said, Hey, we're, we're hanging it up for, for the winter and we're going to the Fort Lauderdale boat show. Miami boat, West, show. Miami boat yeah. show. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. tell me about anything exciting that you saw down there that was like blew you away or, or an experience that was, is worth sharing a, a good story if, that if you may go into more owner, detail on your podcast. If you're a boat owner, you need to go and check it out. I highly recommend paying the, whatever it is. I think they hiked it up maybe another hundred dollars. So it's around two fifty for the VIP pass. Okay. But if you drink any beer or eat any food, you're going to, spend the 250 so it's worth it to have the little private tent with a buffet 
and clean bathrooms. And it's all the way at the end of the big marina of boats. So you kind of have a little VIP area. It's worth every penny to go just get the VIP little package that you can get online. Okay. I've never um, been. So this is, this is learning for me. It's on my wife's list of, we need to go uh, to that, that uh, and Miami. What was a black lemonade was 15 bucks. Yeah. It was something like yeah. that. So, like I said, it, you'll spend that if you're going to, you know, it's hot. You're going to be drinking water, Cokes. Everything's eight, 10 bucks. So yeah, get the little VIP pass. Just go ahead and treat yourself if you're going to yep. do it. Right. And then uh, act like a baller. Act like you own the joint, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I will say, though, if if you have um, what I would consider average, average sized boat, right? Like I run about 24, 20 to 24 foot boat where you're the, the lake life person, right? Maybe not the cruiser, but um just learning about um, all the other types of boats that are out there. That's a great place because you can see them, you can walk on them, you can talk oh, to yeah. the people about them. And then the stupid expensive boats, like there was one. Um, the Midnight Express. Mm -hmm. It oh, was, yeah. um, I think it was what, 60, 60 foot. It, it had humongous. like six, four fifties on the back. <laughs> it was, it was not blacked out and, you know, there was a Mercedes AMG, the G wagon thing in the yeah. middle matched, yeah. painted so, to match it. Yeah, of course I, I said, um, I said, I know that that doesn't pull this boat obviously. Um, but does it come with it? If you purchase the boat and the, no. the girl said, yeah, no. And I said, you mean to tell me I'm going to buy a $10 million boat and you can't throw the G wagon in? <laughs> Come on. I'm not asking for, for much. That's what I mean, you have to be a baller tiny fraction. Yeah. You have to yeah. pretend to be a baller to get anywhere. Cause I would, I would have never even like approached that lady. Cause yeah. I'm not getting, I'm not buying a G wagon at any point. So <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Um, every kind of boat that, that you could ever possibly even consider is there. Um, everything from the the dinghies to the oh yeah 84 foot catamarans um, yep. and uh, the people are great and they just want to teach you um, I think one of the really cool parts for me was um, being able to walk on an experience like the cigarette boats right um, yeah. I'd I would love to have one even if it's just for a couple of summers <laughs> but in reality uh, we have too many friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we couldn't get coolers and people and, and on those, but, um, it, it's just really cool to actually see the inside yes. and those dashboards are intimidating. Yeah. There was a, what was it? A 50 foot fountain center console and the bedroom was under the center. Like you walked down in the center console and it was a whole king size bed down there and, and oh yeah it's amazing it's how cool. big they are yeah, yeah i didn't you didn't i never like, where's knew it, where's the space coming from i right. didn't even right. see it from up top i yeah. never <laughs> even thought about a whole suite being underneath that yeah but no but it's so, so cool yeah it, it's a great experience i love going to boat shows i've not been to those two big ones and, and they're on my list um but let me go back to so you've bought how many boats have you bought over the years three three yeah okay so you've got the pontoon You've got the wake boat and you had a pond, the sweet water. So two yeah, pontoons in the wake boat. Yeah. What advice do you all have from experienced boaters gone through the process? Um, how did you decide on the style? How did you decide on we're going to get this Cypress K? We bought new, we bought used. What was your thought process as you went through that might be valuable to somebody saying, I'm looking at my first boat. I don't even know where to begin. Well, we really evaluated what we do on the water, you know, which was mainly, you know, they skied and the kids love tubing. So it's very important. We still be able to do that. We have enough friends um, where, you know, we have other folks that do that too. So we didn't really need a full-time ski boat or, you know, a runabout really wasn't going to work because we do have kids and as much fun as they are when you have, you know, the sun brings a, a friend the daughter brings a friend they all want to be in the same little cutty up front or the same little section up front it's just give them that big old pontoon if it goes you can do everything you need that's where why i think we ended up falling on the pontoon was you know we looked at everything and besides center consoles and that kind of stuff when we were first you know we looked at what was in our budget i didn't want to buy somebody else's problems you know i didn't want to go get an older boat um and again, be, 
you know, who knows? You have to depend on that thing. You're an hour away from any dock. Yeah. And I don't want some other guy's pipe, you know, a hose clamp because he didn't tighten it down or whatever coming off duct tape, bailing wire. However, <laughs> who knows what it. you'll find in some right, of them. Right. Yeah. I didn't want that. So um, we knew we were going to get something new. At the time, um, we had talked to a dealer. We looked at a couple of runabouts or <clears throat> ski boats. Um, I think one of the biggest and most important things is you have to set a budget. Yeah. Because you get you get to a boat show, for example, and you see all of these features. And yeah. when you can you can spend, especially on a on a pontoon, you can spend a hundred grand and Easy. and you haven't even put a motor on the thing yet. Yes. <laughs> So one of the things that we did was we set a budget, but even more importantly, not just the budget for the boat, but gas every right. weekend. Fuel economy. What, what's the fuel economy for that boat, especially yep. if you're going to be running all weekend? What does that really look like? Um, what does it cost to winterize it? Yep. Um, general maintenance, like the boat, the first pontoon that we had, it only had one battery, but we knew that we were going to upgrade the stereo and, and do something else. So it was going to have to be a um, switch, switch, two batteries for two system. batteries. So we knew that was going to be an upgrade, but also knowing that those are adjustments that you can make every year. And it's not something that you have to do all at once, but it's, it's not just those creature comfort things. It's life jackets. Those things aren't cheap. <laughs> oh Yeah. yeah. It's the, the floaties for, for people, you know, people laugh about the noodles that you float on those, the things that really work, the good ones, like yeah. the, good ones, the, the big, yeah, yeah, the big ones are like 40, oh, yeah. 50 bucks. Yeah. yeah. You need the, the 350 wrap. pound, 350 <laughs> pound is the safest bet for everybody on your boat. So that's what we've got to find. No one gets embarrassed. You yeah, know? that's you right. Know. Nobody's got, Hey, can I get the bigger noodle? I got yeah, this that, little teeny one. Yeah, that's that that what they're going to those big lots noodles. <laughs> You know, but, but Chad, I like that. I'm a over 200 pounder, so I can appreciate that. Yeah, having a train well. of noodles. Yep. <laughs> but I think, you know, knowing what you want, how you want to use it, but knowing your budget, not just for the boat itself, but for the life of the boat. Um, go ahead and plan on, and, and I'm a compulsive planner, if you can't already tell, um, you're going to have to replace those tires in five years. You're going to yeah. have to do the, whatever that greasing thing is. See, I don't do that part. <laughs> <I> do <all laughs> that. <laughs> you but make the checklist. He does it, huh? Right. Yeah, exactly. Much. Um, just knowing what to expect because it's so easy to, you know, you, you go out on the boat and, and you fill it up and we had a 24 gallon tank on the sweet water. Yep. We knew that if we were going to be tubing and, and all running all day, we were going to have to stop at a marina somewhere and get more gas. That's a two yeah. tank day, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that turns into a $200 gas weekend, and we haven't even talked about food. Mm -hmm. Well, and much like you, I think that's what we're trying to accomplish is to help people um, make the best decision for their lifestyle and what they actually want to do. You know, if you're like fishing, your wife likes skiing, there's a lot of options out there where you can get both of them done. It's in your price range. Be patient. Look yes. around. Talk to all your friends. Ride on their boats. Ask them like, yo, I'm thinking about getting a boat and I kind of like your boat. You know what? What's some things you don't like about it? Or ask your friends, ask your buddies, because as soon as you ask your buddy about his boat, you're going to have about three hours of conversation. <laughs> they have a few yeah. things to share. Yeah, just ask They're You know, that's the biggest thing. And that's what we did. We leaned pretty hard on Molly's mom and dad, all of our friends that have boats, which are most of their friends. So, yep. you know, when we had already been on their boats and we'd been on different types of runabouts a sea ray versus a chaparral versus a bay liner versus a they're all different yep and it's really about your comfort level you know I, we went with an outboard because at the time uh that brand new evan root e-tech was uh, i think 800 hours before you had to do anything yep mm -hmm. besides treat the fuel treat the gas but you don't mess with the lower <coughs> unit you don't mess with the impeller you don't it's I have to look in the book, which we don't have it anymore, but I, it was a crazy number. And I think eight years, I was just like, we haven't done anything to this motor in eight years. I'm taking it to the guy, you know, like <laughs> it seems like we should have this looked at at least a yeah. little bit. Hour <laughs> meter was nowhere near 800 hours, but it was like, there's no way, you know, so I took it in and he was like, this is way early. Why are you bringing it in? I said, it's been eight years, dude. <laughs> I'm well, getting nervous. You know, it's kind of like your first car. Um, especially if you're new to boating, um, if you don't want, if you buy a brand new boat 
and invest stupid money in it. And you work hard for that. Um, you're going to hit the trailer. Yep. Yep. You're, you're going to hit the dock. Yep. Um, I, I hope and pray that you don't hit another boat. You're going to um, knock your rub rail off, but don't get mad. That's what it's for. It's called a rub rail. <laughs> it says it right there in the name. There's right. a strong possibility that you're going to run over a buoy. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a strong possibility. Leave your ladder that- down. Let, let me ask you this. Is there a chance you've done any of these? All of them. <laughs> I think episode four, I talk about Molly. Um, like we're first time we loaded that pontoon. It may be like two. That first there's a couple episodes. Anyway, this is the first time we loaded that pontoon, it was like a VW, you know, beetle jumped off the cliff and crashed on the blacktop. It was crashing and crunching everywhere. So I was I dove for the trailer trying to assess damage and she thought she ran no, over me. In my defense. I loaded V-holes my entire life. Right. It's a different cha- a different thing. Change. Yeah. I'm getting this ginormous it's aluminum tube into a <laughs> little bit. It, it was not, it was not pretty. wasn't fun. So we folded up one fender. I beat it all. And everything was fine, but you everything know, everything was fine. She, she was stressed. The truck was rocking. The trailer was crunching. Everything. I couldn't was bad. see him. I thought I killed him. She did. <laughs> I, did. She she I thought me. I ran him over. Yeah. True story. But see, that helps somebody <laughs> else. Here, on the but here you are to share. Let, let me tell you about the mistake we made. Let's yeah. not uh, do this because you don't want to run over your husband. Yeah. Just stay calm. Don't It'll do that fine. today anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so so far, we'll, we'll yeah. go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's awesome advice. I, I love the budget, the, the boating lifestyle budget, the all in, including yeah. the cooler and the food and the fuel exactly. and the insurance and the storage. Um, and then, calm. Chad, what you said, be patient. Yeah, there's always another boat. Even now, when things are really crazy, be patient. Make sure you're making the right choice. Right. And if you have a guy that you like or one of your friends has a dealer or, you know, we've dealt with Arnold's Marine. There's no, you know, affiliation or anything. That's just who we've always dealt with here in Louisville. He's always been super honest. He's always, you know, we basically gave him a list of what we wanted it. And he called us what a month and a half later and was like, why don't y'all come in? I think I got a couple of things you'll be interested in. That's all you have to do. Just be patient. Don't it'll come to you. If you really want it, you set your mind that we're getting a boat next summer or we're getting a boat and there is a boat buying season and it's not at the beginning and it's not at the end of the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, right there I, in the middle when all those storage fees and boat payments are you can't do nothing in February, you know. <laughs> Come January, March, like, right? what is this? Right, twenty five hundred bucks. In, exactly. You buy a boat in November. <clears throat> well, in this area of the country, you buy a boat in November. You're not using that thing for for four or five months. Yeah, we bought one in January. That means you have a boat payment. Well, unless of course you're off able to play pay cash. You've got four boat payments, and you're not using the thing. They're tough. Yeah, those aren't yeah. fun. <laughs> but one of the things that we did too was we contacted the Arnold guys and they are known for buying other um boat dealerships that go out of business okay in a bankruptcy situation yep. so our first boat our yeah. sweetwater the the motor the boat itself and the trailer were all three different years yeah they came okay. from three different dealerships and they packaged it all together yeah so okay. we were able to get a, a brand new boat at a used boat price, but we did have to wait. It, yeah. You right. Know, be patient. Yeah. And if you get a guy that you trust, just like when you have a car dealer, you know, everybody has a guy that they like, they believe in, or they go to when their, you know, truck blows up or whatever. I always still go see Tony down at blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it, it makes such a difference. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Have you had to call upon them with any of the boats for warranty work or, you know, m- maybe when you loaded up that first pontoon and you had to get the 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 uh, wheel well, the fender well fixed. Not really? I mean, the the guy with the wake boat, um, what's the name? Protec Marine out of. Yeah. He's up in Indiana. Very far north. Uh, yeah. Okay. We drove four and a half hours to get that heyday from Louisville. Oh, really? OK. Two yeah. and a half hours from Louisville to the lake. So it was a six and a half one way journey just to get that boat done. There. But um he's uh, we haven't really he's been very helpful over the phone and he's sent us plenty of you know we had a little scratch in the gel coat he sent me a whole <laughs> bottle and then i had my gel coat guy down at lake cumberland put it on which is still cost me but it was going to cost me way more to drive that boat all that Cumberland's baby hard. up there yeah and my other option for that boat is in tennessee which is two hours away so it's like 
I really just have to pay for whatever because I'm so far away from any heyday dealerships. Okay. But gotcha. The guys in Arnold's has always helped us out. The guys locally down at Jamestown have always been uh, helpful, friendly. You know, the guy that uh, we use the most is Anchorage Marine and they're right next door to where we keep the boat. So <laughs> okay. they'll even go get the boat out of the shed for us. Yeah. Um, and for maintenance or yeah, service, winterizing. He'll be like, when you want me, you know, I call him when you got open and he's like, well, I can go get it on Wednesday. Like, yep. Like, you know, the code, <laughs> get it and, you know, the covers back on it, everything. There's no boot prints in it or anything. We've had that too, where they did the work, not them, but we had somebody else and they, you know, the work was done, but the cover was off. There's boot prints and greasy handprints all over your seats. Like, come on, man. Needless yeah. to say, that was the last time the boat went there. And that was, a, that was <laughs> a dealership. Agree. That was a dealership in Somerset and it was just a hot mess. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, I always, I always say that as much as the brand matters, the dealer matters as much. Yeah. Um, and who's going to do the work on it. If you yep. buy a pre-owned or you buy from out of the area, who right. are you going to go to when you need something done? Because if it happens Memorial day weekend, yep. well, if it's Much six like weeks, a, you, you lose a lot of time. Yeah. Jamestown. Uh, there's not a lot of guys that work on Volvos like the, Volvo oh, yeah. and the, you know, there's not, uh, I don't think there's any, and yep. there was only one guy that worked on Evan root e -Tex. So well, and everything that, else was mercury. You know, you got black <laughs> on the black, brother, you're good and, to go. And they, that was another thing too. And when considering buying the, the new boat, you know, we trust Anchorage Marine and knew that their expertise was in Mercury. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that was one of the things to on our list was to make sure that that was the type of motor that it had, because we knew somebody that we trusted that could work on it, um, which is something that most people don't, you know, like he, Chad was saying about the Volvo. Most most people don't even think about it. Average you, yeah, you buy it and then you think who is going to work on it versus, right. oh, who's going to work on it? So I buy the right one. Right. Yeah, exactly. that's that's the right order. Of course, exactly. in the perfect world, nothing's ever going to happen. Uh, <laughs> always going to run like a top. Until yeah, you you're too it. new to boating. I mean, I know it's been 12 <laughs> years since you've been an owner, but perfect, come on, Molly, slap them upside world. the head. Right. right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> the um, the famous <laughs> wave in the middle of yeah. the lake. Hey. It's yeah. Like, Shit. Yep. <laughs> I guess it's our turn. Yeah. I've been there. I remember yep. one time when uh when I was uh younger, I, I took my girlfriend out on the boat and we ran and we came back and brought it back and didn't fill it up. And then all of us kids went out to the restaurant and we ended up waving in the middle of the channel. Uh -huh. And it was all my fault because I didn't fill up the yeah. fill up yeah. the tank. Not yeah. a good feeling. Not a no, good feeling not. at all. No, it isn't. <laughs> it's the worst. Well, this has been a ton of fun. Um, I, I love, I love you guys' podcast. I hope you keep it up for a long, long time. Yep. Uh, if anybody out there is listening, go check it out. Lake life with Molly and Chad. What can we expect in the next 12 months? What do you all have uh, up your sleeves and, and what kind of stories are you going to be telling? Oh. Cause if you can't, if you can't tell they play off each other and they have a lot of fun together. And when they oh, bring right. their friends in, it's even more so it's an it, way more entertaining than any of my podcasts, except for this one. <laughs> you know, I'm like, Hey, think about this and think about that. You guys are telling stories and joking and having a good time, which I love. So, um, the, I don't want to say second season, but the next round of episodes, um, learning a lot about podcasting too. Can you tell <laughs> yeah. um, the next round that we do? Um, it's no longer going to be for the rookies, as we may say. Yeah, we okay. hope to get it a little more um, we, from the learning stage to actually what we do and like some of those stories, like what to expect. Like this is what's going to happen if you, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and talking about um, we want to have one with all of our little friends, yeah. all of our kids, all of our friends. But it is oh, yeah, that's good. It's yeah. definitely going to have to be pre-recorded because, <laughs> you know, you can't just you, set up. You don't want to do that live with some 46 yeah. year old yeah. with buddies. Yeah. Who knows? No, I'm talking about out. the little kids. The little oh, kids. the little, uh, little yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, this Mom did what? Right. Yeah. 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 No, and one of our uh, our friends favorite episodes is the one with our son on it. He's just kind of in the back ground saying little stuff back like, but everything he said was comedy gold so they uh, all oh yeah <laughs> yeah yep, i but, um, remember that one do that and um talk about some unique ways to provide adult beverages yep. okay 
Okay. We have a friend that's a, she's basically like a, Oh, chef. I don't know what you would call her, She's but like a baking connoisseur. Oh my gosh. She makes delicious desserts, like regular desserts, anything you can think of. But then she decided to start adding flavored vodka to different puddings and different. Well, it's now amazing. There vodka is pudding. Change. That's a new one. Yeah. We'll, we'll save it for the episode, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. I just want to yeah. tease just enough. Oh, there's so whipped cream, go, chocolate, and chips. Ch- ch- <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Where, where can they? Chad, don't give away the recipe for crying out loud. So this good. is my audience. You get, they're not. They got to come see you guys. Where, where can they find your podcast? Your, I know I listen to you on Apple. Um, Pretty much any um, of the platforms that are out there. I think we're on Spotify. I know we're on Amazon and Apple. Audible. Audible. Well, and the Apple thing just happened. So thank you for acknowledging that. Um, that was worth every effort of that was time. A lot of work. <laughs> Lord. A lot of hoops, but we did. Yes, it. I remember that. Yeah. So any, like- basically anywhere, anywhere that you'll listen to podcasts, it's going to be there. Um, download it, subscribe, leave a review for them. Uh, awesome. I, I believe I've done that for you. If not, I will do that. I will do that when we finish up here. Thank uh, you. But I've, I really enjoyed your podcast. I really enjoy you guys, the stories and your, your personalities are great. Um, perfect for doing this and delivering the type of content that you do. It, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, and thanks for joining us here and, uh, and sharing yeah, some of your us. stories here too. Yeah, I will say um, the Miami Boat Show for 2022 is um, February 16th and we'll be um, getting live on um, that uh, a few of those docs as oh, we go nice. and visit with people. So yep, that's the whole definitely point of this new- follow the Facebook page and, and um, TikTok will We'll be hitting that for sure. Yeah. So what are your, your Facebook is Lake life with Molly and Chad. That's right. Okay. And then um, TikTok is just uh, Lake life. Yeah. Perfect. We're working on a website, but Lake life is uh, a tough one to get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just throw that Molly and Chad the in there. there. You'll, you'll yeah. be some, okay. It'll some be guys, that I've, but, some yeah. guys yeah. name I cannot pronounce is. owns the rights to like everything <laughs> that has Lake and life and you name it. He who's got it. Who's got rights to that. Uh, some guy I don't know. He's oh, okay. I couldn't pronounce his name. Syllables. Yeah, when okay. you look on GoDaddy, somebody's like, I'm investing in this yeah. in this brand. Uh, somebody's yep. gonna want it someday. Yep, and that's <laughs> yeah. what they do. So yeah, that's what they did. Thank you for having us. This has been awesome. Yep. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks, guys.